Hey, what's up guys? This is Jeff. So today we're going to do a video on health in Hawaii. Just basically your health and how to expect your healthy lifestyle to coexist with Hawaii. So I guess the number one thing that people seem to associate with Hawaii is a more relaxed uh, lifestyle which is going to lower anxiety and other mental health issues. If we go straight to the state and see what the state is saying about um, mental health, that's the number one most critical line item for them is mental health. So of the top three things that are affecting the, 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 the health of people in Hawaii, heart failure, bacterial infections, and mental health. The number one thing is mental health. So. Let's let's take a look at that because people they want to move here because they're looking for healing. I I there's like a stigma. Oh, I'm I'm healing in Hawaii. I'm moving to Hawaii to heal. I'm moving, you know, they come here for these reasons. There's some there's some truth to that, okay? So nature just in general, anytime you can get out in nature, you know, that is a healing a place of healing right it's a place of meditation it's a place of refuge and one of the things that Hawaii has that you might not get where you're coming from in a colder climate is you know year-round warmth so you're con year-round you're able to get out in nature whereas if you're in I don't know New Jersey or something for four or five months out of the year you're gonna be pinned to your house right indoors and if you're coming from a really hustle and bustle place, like Chicago, New York, or you know wherever, you're gonna feel like you're really running on high cylinders. Well, guess what? Most of Hawaii, in particular Oahu, is just as much of a rat race as anywhere else. As a matter of fact, here in Kona, it's really just getting more and more crowded, and it's an island, so. To say that you're going to be getting away from the stress of your everyday life uh, if you're living here, it, it yeah sure I'm sure there's places you can go that will help you with your anxiety or stress, but to assume that you know the 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 challenges that you're facing with your mental health on the mainland are going to just be absolved dissolved here. Um, Short term, sure. Most of the time, you're going to have a, a state of euphoria that's going to alleviate a lot of your stress. But as that novelty of being in a new place wears off, it, it seems to rear its ugly head, the mental health thing. And that's why the number one most critical health factor in Hawaii is mental health. Okay, so without drilling down mental health, you get the point on that. Okay, it's it's an issue here and the state has recognized it as the number one issue it's also drugs they blame it on they blame it on um, a lack of public care a lack of programs designed to help people so that's what the state is is blaming they said that that actually um, health care providers say that there has been a 20% increase in patients hospitalized for mental health treatment in recent years. They bl they blame the cuts. They say they the cuts to community programs to save money are to blame. <clears throat> so the next subject to to talk about would be the bacterial infections, like you know, bacterial pneumonia uh, that comes from. Uh, black mold, dengue fever, I guess would be like a virus really, but uh, rat mold, rat lung. These are all things you might want to look into on your own, just kind of giving you some ideas, you know, dengue fever, uh, uh, rat lung, and, you know, bacterial pneumonia, black mold, stuff like that. The, the bacteria stuff, also staph, staph infection happens. So I'll just give you a story with, with, from, from my perspective. 
So they say don't go in the water when you have an open cut. Well, it's don't it's not don't go in the water. So these a lot of people have said don't go in the water when you have an open cut. I say go in the water when you have an open cut, but I go into the ocean. So I had a huge gaping wound on my hand when I wrecked my bike. I mean, I had I had road rash major because I wrecked my bike riding in volcano. I was riding down the mountain and it's just an incredible downhill from Chain and Craters Road and I was fixing the glasses on my side of my head and I pumped the brakes and I flew over the handlebars and I'll tell you what luckily I'm luckily I wasn't seriously injured meaning like luckily I'm still alive right because I was hauling butt and you know anyway so I got some major road rash and I, I had a wicked cut like my a chunk of my hand was missing really seriously because uh, when I landed I went straight into the ground and instantly they were telling me they were saying hey you need to uh, you need to make sure that this doesn't get infected so I was instantly getting this idea of like whoa yeah okay they're like yeah we've seen you know they say something like flesh-eating disease and all that and what that is is yeah, you do. You want to put your hydrogen peroxide and your alcohol on it always, once a day, to kill any of those bacteria that could be building or could be growing on your um, raw skin like that. But I found that um, neosporin and stuff was only so good. But the real, when I was really healing, was when I would go swim in the ocean. I mean, yeah, it would kind of hurt at first, but because I just let that hand just go right in there and just and what I noticed it, it kind of, it did heal my hand the ocean the ocean especially I, I I would say if any place out of all of them that really healed my hand was Kua Bay I mean but I remember there was one time there was stagnant water on a tide pool and I seen the mosquitoes and stuff flying around there and I I, I said yeah I don't want to I don't want to get my open wound in um, I don't want to touch the stagnant water with an open wound, right? So, I wouldn't say you want to go in like stagnant rivers or creeks or anything where there's still water, but when there's circulating water like the ocean, I would say that's probably healthy for your open wound. And then, you know, but take it to the next level. When you get home, do put some uh, hydrogen peroxide on there or some alcohol just to be on the safe side. But I did find that the ocean was beneficial for healing. So as far as health goes, I, I seem to find the ocean to be uh, therapeutic in healing. Like today, I went down to the pier and it's cold because there's aquifers, freshwater aquifers that leak into the Kailua Bay right there. So it's a little bit colder than other places. Um, but I remember the water was freezing and I had to acclimate to that because I like hot showers and warm stuff. But after about, you know, 30 seconds of going, ooh, like, and then just dipping in there, I, de I definitely felt like a load was being lifted off my shoulders from work and all the other st stress. So the ocean out here is a healthy healing attribute I would consider. A little bit of it could be, you know, thoughts and, you know, uh, whatever, because I've heard things like if you swim around Coconut Island and Hilo three times, if you have any disease, you'll be healed. Like, you know, that's like a, a thing. There's also monatomic gold. There's this monatomic gold that's in the water. You can look it up. Monatomic gold, supposedly it's most prevalent here in Hawaii, and it's, it's, supposed to be a conductor that's in the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm still learning about it, okay? But hearing those kind of things and then knowing what I know about swimming in the ocean out here, I put two and two together, you know, and I'm like, I, th I, think, I think it's safe to say the ocean is, is, a, is a positive, healthy attribute for people uh, here in Hawaii in particular. I'm sure other places have it, but I, I just didn't like swimming in California's ocean. Um, the third thing, the heart, the heart issue. I think that's going to be associated to the sh to the food. I almost said S H I T food, 
And yeah, I'm being serious. The the quality of food here, it you have to remember, it's shipped here. Ninety percent of it's shipped here. That means that it's coming on a ship five days, six days, seven days, eight days before it's even getting to your supermarket, right? So before it's even on the shelves, it's already eight days past being fresh. I mean, let's, uh, I moved here thinking that, okay, well, I'm moving to Hawaii. I'm going to get fresh food. There's going to be fresh fruit. There's going to be fresh vegetables at the farmer's market, at the grocery store. Sure, there is, right? Yeah, there is. But it wasn't, I was just expecting this, like, great, um, I was just expecting this great plethora of uh, cornucopia of fresh fruits and vegetables and even fresh meat fish at least it just doesn't it's not like that and so a lot of the local people are overweight there's a great deal of overweight people in the local community and it has a lot to do with diet and that has a lot to do with what would cause a heart failure I mean there's a there's a significant amount of people who are healthy. They live active lifestyles, but there's also a significant amount of people who are, you know, not very healthy looking, okay? So that, to me, is a sign of the diet. Sure, you can blame the, the, the Western diet, but even, even if it's uh, McDonald's, I, I, I say to myself, okay, they 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 hate McDonald's and yet they still go there. <laughs> it's like so you know that it's bad for you, but you still go. So then it becomes it's their choice. It's like saying like, you know, doing crack is not good for you, but you still do it, right? It's an addiction. So people do do that, and I don't have anything else to say about the personal choices other than. People have to be accountable for their own. They can't blame the government. They can't blame the state. They can't blame other people. They can't blame white people. They can't blame Asian people. They can't blame anyone other than themselves if they make the choice to do something that they know is unhealthy, right? I, I, I just hear a lot of a lot of finger pointing about this issue, so I'm, I kind of it doesn't make sense. I'm like. If you already know you shouldn't do it, then why do you do it? The next thing, the next thing to talk about about the food is EBT. So a lot of people are on EBT, which in Hawaii is known as eat better tonight. So at the same time, a lot of the locals don't like America. They're on EBT, eat better tonight. So, you know. I think a lot of it has to do with the mentality and the, the purity of a heart, right? So you can't you can't just blame other people. So if, if you do bad, toxic things in your life, if you are living a toxic lifestyle and you're getting the ramifications of a toxic lifestyle, at some point in time, you have to really come to come to terms with the fact that you can't blame everyone else for your um, health problems because there's not a magic pill that can just reverse your toxic toxicity you know so it starts it starts with the, the individual and sometimes that's um, the heart you know like literally the heart like your heart and soul like who you are as a person like are you a good person do you do you practice what you preach kind of thing, you know? And me personally, I always, I'm just like anyone else. I can get carried away with anything. But when I put my feet on the ground and I'm really trying to be grounded, I have to be honest with myself. I can't go off and blame other people for me. So what's this have to do with health? Well, the health factors that are here on this island that are really afflicting the place that's what I would say is 
the big the big ones um, you know as far as healthcare goes it's it's up in the air um, I go to the chiropractor he does a good job I've gone to the eye doctor at Costco Walmart They're, they do an alright job I've gone to the x-ray tech um, for something and I've gone to the emergency room and everything seems to be on par. It's it's not like you're living in Cambodia or something like that, right? I mean, you're not going to be in like a, a, a third world institutional environment, but uh, it's it's all right. I'll, I'll point out the VOG. If you have COPD, you know, volcanic smog tends to be an issue for people. If you are uh, light skinned like myself, you... I would say wearing sunscreen, see I don't wear sunscreen, I got a grandma who's always telling me wear sunscreen, but I'm always wearing coconut oil. I I don't, something about sunscreen and me, I just, I'm just not really too cool with it. I'd rather wear a big brim hat and or something over my ears or long sleeves like a rash guard or something or coconut oil. I like the hydration factor of coconut oil. You might, you might also. So I would say that's that's one of your things to put in your starter kit is some coconut oil. Whenever and if you do get sunburn, you put aloe on it. If for all those of you who are trying to get tan, another thing that you might like about aloe is aloe has some sort of hydration that will actually give you some darker color if you're trying to get a little bit darker color. So if you get sun exposure while you're wearing your coconut oil you might shower or whatever clean up and then apply some aloe you know to your places that you got burned okay so outside of that I mean it's it's not more it's not more healthy or less healthy than anywhere else I would say once the nostalgia wears off if you if you're just visiting here you're going to feel supercharged for the time that you visit here and that 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 little honeymoon period that you're gonna have with visiting Hawaii tends to last about I mean it, it does expire depending on where you are and who you're with it can last anywhere between seven days to three months to a year but at some point in time you know it's gonna set in like okie dokie I'm living life now. I've been there, done that, right? Island fever. So just keep in mind, if you're trying to move here, you're trying to live here, trying to visit here to escape your mental health problems, contrary to what other people say, I'll tell you, it, it it's short-lived, okay? But it, it it is it is good, I think, as long as you're able to get out in nature and recharge, right? You need to get out in nature to recharge. If you if you fall into a rut where you're not getting into nature in the mainland or wherever you're at, and you're not getting out there, you know, then you're going to get into a monotonous situation. So that does it for this. Subscribe to the channel if you like.